I'm Ryan Raffaelli. I'm an assistant professor in the Organizational Behavior Unit at Harvard Business School. And the paper that we'll be talking about today is Cognitive Framing and Capability Development at the Federal Bureau of Investigation. This paper looks at uh, the tenure of Director Bob Mueller at the FBI while uh, from the moment he gets there, a lot of people don't realize that he was appointed director of the FBI uh, on September 4th and September 11th, everything changes for him. And so this paper follows him from that moment all the way through his tenure. We try to track how he started thinking about adding new capabilities to the FBI that would allow them to continue to be a law enforcement agency, which is about putting bad guys in jail versus at that moment when those planes hit those buildings, they had to start thinking about counterterrorism, which meaning, which meant for them, how do you prevent crimes before they happen? This paper was a journey for us because we followed uh, the, the director for the tenure of his time as in the FBI, and what it allowed us to do is to track both the capabilities that they were trying to add to the organization, but the bin that we look at through the paper is this notion of how he brought different types of cognitive frames to the organization that helped um, both introduce and institutionalize change across the agency. So the director had to think very carefully about the different constituencies that he was trying to manage during this period. To give you uh, some example, if you start on the afternoon of September 11th, one of the first interviews we did with the director, and we interviewed him almost every year during this process, um, was he talked about the idea that here the buildings were coming down that morning. President Bush had brought him into the Oval Office, and what he told us was that he comes into the Oval Office and he says, Mr. President, uh, we are here, we have people on the scene to bring these people to justice. We will make sure that we find these people. And the president stops him at that moment. He says to us, uh, Bob, while that's all well and good, uh, the FBI's done this for many years, but that's not what I'm asking you to do today. What I'm looking to do today is to try to protect uh, the citizens of the United States and the world from the next building coming down. And the director said to us, it was at that moment, he felt like a high school student who had prepared for the wrong exam because he realized that that was the question that was asked thereafter. And so the innovations that he had to bring to the FBI were ones that allowed them to begin to break the notion of what does it mean to be an organization that is just about law enforcement, but reframe in a way that also allows them to put new processes in place where they can both do counterterrorism and national security alongside what they had always done. One of the things that we brought to this paper was a longitudinal approach. So what often happens when you're studying change is that we might get these cross sections of you know, something that happens at this very specific moment. But what was unique about um, the process that we decided we would employ here was it was one of patience and the idea that we would start with the director and his senior team and then FBI agents and follow them over this decade plus um, period of time, I think we were able to see uh, different changes unfold and emerge and begin to really understand and theorize in a way that allowed us to go deeper into both the phenomena, but then also be able to theorize in a way that we think can be actually quite more generalizable to other contexts. For this paper, we thought about various different types of data sources because if you look at the situation, you know, we're, we're looking at an organization trying to adapt over a decade. And so this required uh, a set of data that we could triangulate over time. And so what we've started with was um, interviewing the director over a seven year period, each year him coming in and giving updates uh, across uh, his tenure, trying to understand how he was making sense of the changes. In addition, we were visiting the field sites, both uh, FBI headquarters, but also going out into the different fields, trying to understand how each one of the different cities was thinking about the changes. And so we interviewed uh, almost 150 FBI agents, try to get a sense for um, how they were thinking about this, you know, making sure that we were being true to the method of really inducing uh, the theory from the ground up. And so then, because it was a long study, um, we also brought in longitudinal data, which was archival data on all the congressional testimonies. So every time that the director showed up and uh, testified in front of Congress, we coded all of that data to see how uh, his responses were changing. And then what we also did is, during those testimonies, 
uh, members of Congress can also then ask uh, questions, and that's where the conversation often happens uh, in, this, in this environment. And they can also submit questions after that the director has to respond to. So we could see him thinking on the fly uh, during those, because often he didn't know what the questions would be around how to respond. And we also learned that the FBI agents were listening very closely to what he was saying when he was testifying to Congress, because sometimes that was a hint for them into where they could see him going. And so all these data sources, if you think about how they sit together, the challenge for us was to bring them together in a way, in a coherent story that allowed us to start inducing a set of theories that we felt would be applicable to the paper that we published here. One of the things that was sort of surprising more broadly was the way in which the director goes about negotiating a role for the FBI in this world. Because at the time, uh, in our interviews with uh, many government officials, uh, and you see this is, should actually counterterrorism, for example, this new capability, uh, be a part of the FBI. You know, the idea was, well, maybe it should be in the CIA, or at that time they had uh, Homeland Security was emerging, you had the NSA, National Security. So all these different components, and this is actually something we see is similar in how organizations think about you know, bringing in new capabilities. Where do you put the new uh, technologies, the new capabilities in the existing infrastructure of the organization? Do you bring it inside? Do you make it separate? And how do you let the two things uh, live you know, alongside one another and, and coexist? This is often a question that um, you know, I think a lot of uh, academic work gets is that when you try to isolate around a specific time, does it still hold what, by the time it actually gets to publication? And so one of the things that we're doing is um, particularly in a, in a project like this where it's qualitative, what you're really looking for is you're looking for theories to emerge that extend beyond not only that one point in time, but can also be generalizable to other contexts. So part of the hurdle is to try to figure out when is there uh, a moment in time, in this case over a decade, that can encapsulate what we would think might be happening in other organizations in other contexts. And so actually isolating around the fact that we were able to capture from the moment that the director showed up at the FBI to uh, his very end, and then continually coming back to him and agents and then looking at uh, archival data, we start to see this moment in time come together in a way that we think is all of a sudden now applicable to other organizations. Obviously, uh, let's hope there's never another 9-11, but we do believe that there are many situations where not only government organizations, but for-profit organizations are thinking about how do I quickly bring in new capabilities? And while at the same time, one of the big challenges for leaders is to tr try to figure out how do I frame this up so both the people inside my organization, but also those outside, understand and buy in and eventually uh, adopt. If you think about why, why did we do this work, there were several reasons that we believe this work was important. First of all, the profound impact of 9-11 on so many people, not only in the United States, but others. But it also represented in our minds an unusual and an extreme case where we could begin to try to understand what would it take in a situation like this for a leader like Director Mueller to have to rethink uh, the definition of both who are we and the capabilities, but also bring those in and then bring his people and also key stakeholders like the Congress and president along with him. And so our belief is, is that this work, if you separate it from what happened after 9-11 in the FBI, it has implications, we believe, for a lot of leaders who are thinking about uh, a long tenure of success in their organization, the world they see is starting to change. Maybe it's not as blanketed as all of a sudden 9-11, it happens one and then everything changes. But we do know that leaders are constantly thinking about either new technologies or business models that are gonna have to change the way that they do their work. And so reframing this in the notion that we see in this paper, the key takeaway is what we find what the director does is that he makes a shift from really focusing on what we call uh, outcome frames about this is what has to get done to making a gradual shift towards thinking about process framing. And we believe this is actually quite important for leaders because as you go through these capability shifts, being a cognizant of the idea, the idea of how you're communicating your changes and potentially when you're going through a change like this, that maybe focusing on these outcomes first may actually give you the, the leeway and the runway to then shift towards a process frame that allows you to institutionalize changes profound as the ones that we saw at the FBI.
I believe that, uh, along with my co-authors, that there is an opportunity that's uh, emerging in the world between strategy and cognition, and uh, a lot of scholars have started to publish in this over the last uh, 10 to 20 years, but I think there's actually uh, an implication here of if we can strip away uh, the complexity of what does it mean to bring new capabilities into an organization. What we provide is a lens through how these frames get set up. Uh, we know that leaders are so important at these periods of time where the organization could go one way or another. And the belief is, is that if we can help expose leaders to these, the notion of how they frame up and cognitively make sense of what's happening to them, but also help stakeholders both within and outside their organization make sense of it as well, we see this as in some ways the missing piece around how organizations bring new capabilities inside their organization. This is, a, is really quite meaningful because uh, we've been collecting data on this for over a decade. And so the idea that uh, this work got recognized for particularly the methods behind that and uh, the effort that went into uh, maintaining these deep relationships with the FBI. You know, we interviewed um, uh, well over 150 FBI agents and we stayed very close to Director Mueller during this period. But then we also collected quite a bit of archival data to sit alongside that. And so, you know, the attention to and, and discipline that I think came from the methods behind this, the fact that uh, the society would recognize that, it, it certainly means a great deal. And, and I think that there's also a personal thing here, and that is, is that, you know, when you do a study like this, you see the sacrifices that um, particularly so many people in government have made for our own safety. You know, you look at uh, these FBI agents and uh, what they did for us to protect us at certain periods of time, uh, not only in our country's history, but more broadly the conversation around what does it mean to uh, see government at its best. I think that that's really quite powerful and it's also a tribute to uh, the work that they did and also their willingness to let us come in and follow them at a time that was quite vulnerable.